Let's begin. In college football, you'll come to learn that there is always at least one team who is just always going to win no matter what you do. Oh, hi, Alabama. Look, Alabama doesn't win every game, but during the entire decade of the 2010s and beyond, you expected them to win. Hey, man, you said this was a Georgia football video. All right, calm down. I'm getting there. The Georgia football program had been trying to break the barrier into Alabama's level for years now in hopes of winning their first national championship since 90. And Georgia's recently hired head coach Kirby Smart, fresh off the heels of a defensive coordinator job at Alabama, certainly had Georgia on the right track, although they were still waiting to take that next step. In 2017, they once again have that chance. National Championship game. Up 13-0 against Bama at halftime. Of course, we all know how that game to it out. To the end zone. It was looking like the 2021 season for Georgia was gonna be no different. Georgia was undefeated, ranked number one going into that SEC championship game, but Bryce Young and Alabama notched 24 points on him in the second quarter, and once Georgia quarterback Stetson Bennett threw an interception return for a touchdown early in the fourth, the game was all but over. Georgia had now lost their seventh straight game to Alabama. After Georgia bounced back in the playoff semifinal with a drubbing of Michigan, they would get yet another shot at un seeding the tide, just one game removed from losing the last one. It's time for the landscape of college football to change. It's time for the 2022 National Championship game. Through the first half, it's an absolute defensive slugfest. Despite a few big plays on both sides, nothing is given up except field goals. Alabama leads 9-6 at the half. And after another few good defensive stops from both sides to start the second half, Bryce Young takes the reins for Alabama and embarks on a nearly 8-minute long 17-play odyssey. Georgia's defense is on their heels, but they still force Alabama into a third and long, where a giant Hall can't finish the catch despite an absolutely pinpoint throw from Bryce Young. Georgia's D bent but didn't break, and they'll still be down only by one score after this field goal. But it's blocked! The dogs are very good at blocking field goals. And with that play right there, Georgia began shifting the tectonic plates of the college football world. It wouldn't take hold immediately. Despite Georgia scoring a touchdown, Alabama would then kick a field goal and then luck out with one of the stupidest turnovers you'll ever see. I mean, what are we even doing here? <laughs> the football gods aren't even trying at this point. Alabama is right on the doorstep of crushing Georgia's hopes and dreams once again. But the script was being rewritten on the fly. Past Alabama scripts would have been smooth sailing from here on out after benefiting from the luckiest bullshit you've ever seen. Not this time. That was Alabama's last dash of pixie dust. The cracks in the foundation had been showing all game. They're not the runaway train they once were. It's Georgia's turn. All they have to do is get up and prove it. Caught it! Touchdown, Georgia! Dogs don't blitz. Young has time. Off the hands! Not at all. It's third and one. They're going to throw for it. Bowers has got it. He's got a blocker! Touchdown, Georgia! From the pocket. Launching downfield! Underthrown and intercepted! All the way to the end zone! And Georgia is going to conquer the Crimson Tide! Ladies and gentlemen, Georgia has just beaten Alabama for the first time since 2007. And more importantly, in doing so, Georgia has just won the College Football National Championship for the first time in 41 years. Georgia has usurped Alabama's place atop the college football world. And you know what that means, right? Yep! Now it's Georgia's turn to be the hunted! Bulldogs, you've gotten what you wished for! All eyes are finally on you, and so are all the targets. You are now the runaway train. Now the only questions that remain are, how long can you last, and who will be next? Our first contestant in this quest will be the Oregon Ducks in a top 15 neutral site battle. Wait, the neutral site is Atlanta? Oregon, why did you agree to this? Even so, this game is the perfect opportunity to showcase Oregon's new look offense under new transfer Bo Nix, who throws two interceptions in his first three drives. Oregon loses 49 to three? Our first contestant of 2022 is a failure. 
Our next contestant is another team of Bulldogs, but unfortunately these were FCS Bulldogs and the FBS Bulldogs stifled them with ease. Sorry Samford, you did have an absolutely incredible regular season for yourselves in the SOCON despite this though. Still, FAILURE! Now time for the first SEC matchup of our quest, a South Carolina team still learning the ways of Beamer Ball. They've got former Oklahoma transfer Spencer Rattler, but he's still getting his feet under him and throws an interception early, and then they- Oh wait, all these people need to get off the field first. Students in the end zone. And then they turn the ball over on downs the next drive, and just like that, the Gamecocks lose 48-7. to It always hurts when a fellow conference opponent plays their backup QB in garbage time, and he scores a touchdown on you. Failure! It's time now for Georgia to face the scariest opponent yet, Kent State! Oh wait, an immediate touchdown by Brock Bowers opens the game, and then Georgia stops Kent State on a 3 and out. Yeah, this game's gonna be another blowout. McConkie, what are you doing? Seen and he muffed it, and Kent State dives on it at the 26-yard line. The first punch thrown by a Georgia opponent so far this year. Kent State can't move the ball any further, although they do kick a field goal. Down the field, this is underthrown, and it's picked wow, off. Wow, another big momentum swing by Kent State. Unfortunately, again, their offense once again can't do anything against the best defense in college football, and Kent State's punt is blocked. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a safety. All right, now Georgia's gonna roll on to a win, and Lad McConkey fumbled again? Whatever, though, Georgia's defense has been allowing absolutely nothing so far. Why would they start now? Lee slings it out to the sideline, and this streaking down the sideline is Walker is free, and this is a touchdown for Kent State. Hey, that Walker guy looked pretty good right there. He should really try to transfer to UNC next year, but have his transfer waiver denied by the NCAA. Anyway, Georgia does eventually win this game, but only by a measly. Easily 17. Failure. Not a great showing for Georgia though. Could next week's team be the one to end the quest this early in the season? Eh, it's probably not gonna be Mizzou. No offense, Mizzou. They've been struggling in the dreaded clutches of mid since 2014 and have already gotten obliterated by a Kansas State team that would then lose to Tulane, a team that went 2-10 last year? This 100% scientific transitive property must mean that Mizzou sucks and Georgia's gonna steamroll them, which is what I would have said if Mizzou's defense didn't continue in the footsteps of Kent State's and force three punts and two fumbles to begin the game and their offense is actually able to accomplish something too. Mizzou is up 13 to three at home with the ball and hands it off to Cody Schrader. Mizzou is on the doorstep of blowing this game wide open against the number one team in the country. All they have to do is punch this into the end zone. And they fall start and then get held to a field goal. Mizzou, you missed your chance. And although they keep getting some big plays on offense, Georgia keeps holding Mizzou to field goals kicked by the Take a kicker, baby! But you always felt in the back of your mind that field goals wouldn't be enough. You couldn't hold off Georgia's offense all day, and in the fourth quarter, the dam finally burst. All right, Mizzou, so you're trailing now after leading all day, but there is still time. Get a magical drive here and pull off the upset. Or go three and out and punt it away. Mizzou, you do realize you're not getting the ball back, right? Movement by Missouri, they hand up on the sweep. This is Edwards, and he's got the first Yeah, what did I tell you guys? Tough scene. Failure! Unfortunately for Georgia, due to their close margins of victory, they have been demoted to number two in the country. Sorry, Auburn, it is time for you guys to bear the brunt of the unbridled rage of Kirby Smart for this injustice. And especially lately, with Auburn deep in the dregs of the Brian Harson debacle, this one play will basically sum up this entire game for you. Looks like we're back to easy wins for Georgia. Sorry, Auburn. Failure! Oh, Vandy. Vandy, Vandy, Vandy. Speaking of tough scenes, it's a really tough scene when Samford and Kent State put up better fights against Georgia than you do. As Vandy goes back to sleep dreaming of James Franklin magically returning to them, they are handed our latest failure! 
The Florida-Georgia line is one of the most hotly contested rivalries in college football, and I already can't deal with this music anymore. Florida's lost nine out of the last 13 against Georgia, but if anyone can turn the tide, it's Anthony Richardson, a quarterback who everyone and their mother seems to have a different opinion on. But whatever your take on him may be, he was no match for Georgia's once again suffocating defense, and Georgia takes a quick 21-point lead with help from this nonsense. Bowers tips it to himself, and he'll score. Touch Georgia. Now, if that isn't a sign of a team that's having everything go right for them, I don't know what is. After Florida gets a field goal and Georgia gets another touchdown, uh-oh, it's 28-3, involving a team in Georgia. Time for Florida to go on a long touchdown drive, then immediately follow that with a fumble recovery leading to a field goal, and then follow that with a fantastic interception off an undercut of Stetson Bennett's throw, following that by Anthony Richardson showing off his cannon for an arm. All of a sudden, Florida has made this a one-score game. Can they get one more defensive stop and complete the comeback? And caught. Well, it won't be there. Edwards got the corner. And not there either. He'll give it to him again. And again he comes through and he'll score! Touchdown, Georgia! And it looks like Florida ran out of juice. A valiant effort, but they dug themselves too deep a hole too early. Failure! But enough of this nonsense. Now we have our first real contender this season in the quest to beat Georgia. With Tennessee's high-flying offense vaulting them into a magical win against Alabama, it's gonna be Goliath versus Goliath. Tennessee's offense versus Georgia's defense. Tennessee is the best chance yet on paper to usurp Georgia's throne, and they're ranked ahead of Georgia before this game, no less. If they beat Georgia on the road, there's no doubt left about Tennessee being for real. Trying to bounce it offside, and the ball is out. Tennessee almost had it, and Bennett, I, I think wait a minute, it. Tennessee's got it. And what a great start for them, too. It only results in a field goal, but Tennessee leads by three early. Stopping them there was a win for Georgia's defense, though, and Stetson Bennett wants to prove that his offense ain't no slouch either. Got away from one man, and now he's gonna tuck it and go with it. Got the first down, he might have the touchdown. All right, that's okay, Tennessee. Georgia's a great team, that'll happen. But now's your chance to prove that your offense has come to play. Hyatt's out there and he overshot it. Well, that's not ideal. A couple drives later, Georgia gets the ball with great field position and Tennessee once again gets exploited over the top. Okay, 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 come on, Tennessee, you're fine. Your offense has done nothing so far, but every drive is a new day. At least you're not starting it at the one this time. Do something. Hit as he threw, incomplete. Uh, Goes high, touchdown! Tennessee, you guys aren't serious right now, are you? Hooker. Gonna go long to the near corner to Tillman, and it's intercepted. All right, I'm calling it. Goliath versus Goliath was an absolute dud. Tennessee's offense falls to Georgia's defense handily. Another week, another failure. And count that as Georgia's most impressive note on their resume yet this season. Hey, congrats though, Tennessee. You are officially a quality win again. Can Mississippi State pull off the massive upset at home? Shake and bake. <laughs> well, that looks like a resounding no. Thomas. Oh? Well, Mississippi State has made this game very interesting all of a sudden going into halftime. As long as State doesn't give up a 70-yard touchdown run on the second play, the second half, they should be right back in this game. A few moments later. They gave up a 70-yard touchdown run on the second play, the second half. And then gave up three more touchdowns after that. Yeah, it's gonna be a hard failure from you there, State. So with Kentucky here, we have an interesting case. Will Levis at quarterback, his team ranked top 10 at one point, but now with a close loss on the road against Ole Miss and a home loss to Vandy. Well, reeling from that loss, Kentucky's house is invaded by Georgia's defense and absolutely grinds Will Levis and Kentucky into dust. No points for Kentucky until the fourth quarter. They did have a chance to make it a one-score game, though. Oh, then they missed the field goal. Failure! Georgia Tech is Georgia's historic rival, although boy has it been a one-sided affair lately. And they're currently playing with an interim coach after firing their head coach four games into the season for being terrible. They did beat a ranked Pitt and a ranked U.S. UNC after that though. Time for them to set the tone. How about going for it on fourth and long? One on one, flip down the sideline, drop right down the chimney to McCollum. 
The Yellow Jackets are first on the board and have punched Georgia in the mouth and then they force a three and out. Unfortunately, Georgia Tech would not score for the next nine drives. Despite some people feigning this as a scare, Georgia ends up cruising to a 37-14 victory, Tech's fifth straight loss against them. Another failure! And with that, we are on to the SEC Championship game. LSU's had a weird year this season. In year one of the Brian Kelly experience, they lose in tragic fashion to Florida State, get obliterated by Tennessee, but after that routes top 10 Ole Miss and wins in storybook fashion against Ben. Good. LSU suddenly ranked number five and everyone is fighting over whether a two-loss team would deserve to make the college football playoff. Fortunately for the college football playoff, they didn't have to make that decision as LSU got absolutely embarrassed by a Texas A&M team who everyone expected would just lay down and die for them. Man, that sure is lucky for the college football playoff. Surely this lack of controversy will continue into next season. <laughs> And so, due to Division. LSU is in an SEC championship game regardless, and LSU starts out by driving right down the field. All right, LSU, that's a good start. I know they stopped you, but kick this field goal and get some nice points. Man. They got it down, and it's blocked. Georgia stuffs it. Uh, is anyone going to pick up that ball? <laughs> and now here comes the run back. It's going to be about a 95-yard touchdown. Well, LSU, that's unlucky. But hopefully that's the only unlucky thing that happens this game for you. I mean, it's only a seven-point game, and you have the ball in the second quarter. What the fuck? Well, sorry, LSU, but the luck is just straight up not on your side today. Georgia goes up 21-7, followed soon by 28-7 and 35-7. And although LSU actually outscored Georgia in the second half, it wasn't by any margin significant enough to make it competitive. This SEC championship opportunity for LSU is a failure. And for the 2022 SEC champions, it's playoffs time. Ohio State is reeling from a devastating loss in the game, but due to their wins against Penn State and Notre Dame, Before they lost to Marshall. they still get the number four seed and a seat in the playoff semifinal. But the Buckeyes, despite their constant presence in and around the CFP, has not won a championship since the inaugural one. But with a seemingly endless supply of offensive talent like star wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr., coached by Urban Meyer's protege Ryan Day, and led by future number two overall pick CJ Stroud, this is Ohio State's chance to unseat seat the reigning champions and put themselves on the fast track back to the throne of college football, washing the taste of last game's loss out of their mouth and ushering in a Buckeye dynasty. It's the best shot anyone's had at Georgia thus far. But will it be enough? Georgia starts with a long drive but misses a field goal and Ohio State immediately drives down the field in response and the Stroud to Harrison connection is immediately felt. Georgia responds with a touchdown. Ohio State responds with a touchdown. Georgia responds with an immediate interception on a complete mind read by the Buckeye defender, and Stroud makes them pay to Harrison again. Georgia responds to that with a deep throw and a quick score to keep the momentum from getting out of hand, and for the first time, Ohio State goes three and out, and it only takes Georgia three plays on offense to answer. Can he get the edge? He walks in. Tie game. And after another three and out on offense, Ohio State's tired defense gets run down by Georgia once again, although the short throw on third and 10 forces them into a field goal. But Ohio State's on the wrong side of momentum now. If they want to take Georgia's place, they need to take it back. And with Georgia getting the ball to start the second half, Ohio State's gonna have to do that in less than two minutes. It's Johnson who's got it, spinning to the end zone, touchdown! And it only took them one. Pair that with Ohio State's rested defense at a halftime, forcing a three and out. And pair that with another quick touchdown drive led by Stroud. Open, Abuka. Touchdown, Ohio State. And Ohio State is all of a sudden up by 11 in the college football semifinal. And make that up by 14 now, although they had a chance to be up by more, but couldn't punch it in. Ohio State can only keep the Bulldogs offense down for so long, though. Georgia finds themselves at second and goal on the three, but nearly makes a catastrophic error and instead has to settle for a field goal. Time for Ohio State's offense to get some insurance and whittle down this fourth quarter clock. Or CJ Stroud is forced to scramble short of the first down. 
punt. Well, hopefully your defense can at least force Georgia to run some clock, right, Ohio State? Don't panic. You're still up by two scores right now. Launch wide open. Arian Smith left alone and Georgia strikes quickly. Or you can allow that, but it's fine. It's fine. Still don't panic. You're still winning and you have the ball now. Let Stroud do his thing. See, you're driving and burning clock and you're in the red zone on second and five under four minutes to go. Just keep doing what you're doing. It was a slow developing play. Oh, shit. Ohio State still kicks a field goal, but that's not good enough. They left the back window open, and you can't do that when you're trying to unseat the champs. Minutes from New Year's Eve becoming New Year's Day. It's time for Georgia to drop the New Year's ball. Steps up, delivers down the middle. Kiris Jackson makes the catch. Bennett from the pocket. Launches to the end. The Bulldogs have come all the way back and taken the lead, but Ohio State still got one last chance. 43 seconds left, two timeouts. To unseat the champs and take the penultimate step to the throne, all you need is a field goal. Long throw and a catch by Fleming. Flushed again, he's got a lot of space. Right up the middle, CJ Stroud down into field goal range at the 30. There you guys go. Now can they advance it any further? No, it all comes down to this. In the almighty quest to beat Georgia, it's Ohio State who has gotten the closest. And despite a late collapse, one kick puts them on top, puts them in the championship game, and ends this video right now. Don't check the time code. He hooked it! And Georgia is going to survive! Isn't it so cool that three out of four of the neutral site games for Georgia were in Atlanta this year? I think that's just awesome and totally fair. Unfortunately for Georgia, their final test of the 2022 season is a long way from home, and it's against the Cinderella story with nothing to lose. TCU. In their first year with Sonny Dykes, TCU had their own magical season, winning a bunch of crazy close games that probably deserves a standalone video in its own right. Their only loss was the overtime Big 12 championship game to Kansas State, but they just upset Michigan in their half of the playoff semifinal by speeding out to a 14-0 lead and keeping the Wolverines at arm's length the entire rest of the game. Georgia is the consensus number one who has been here all year. TCU is the lovable underdog who started the season un ranked and has proven everyone wrong every step of the way. Max Duggan, Kendra Miller, Quinton Johnston, and their high-powered offense goes into SoFi Stadium, quickly down by 10 early, but scores one touchdown, and then gets shut out the entire rest of the day by Georgia's defense. Oh yeah, TCU's defense also allowed 65 points? Easily the biggest failure thus far. In the biggest news fest in college football playoff history, Georgia has made it out, running the table in the process. They're back-to-back national champions, undefeated, winning the trophy off the backs of their biggest margin of victory all season? No, this isn't right. This is a team of madmen. They must be stopped. Let's get these two out of the way. Tennessee Martin and Ball State make that two more failures. Failure, failure. But after those two cakewalks, Beamer Ball is back, baby. After a tough start to last season, South Carolina achieved back-to-back -to -back top 10 upsets to end the year. Unfortunately, they started this season losing to North Carolina, but all South Carolina needs to do to right the ship is pull off yet another massive upset here. And they start off with a near flawless drive, and they hold Georgia at only three points in the first half and they score another touchdown near the end of the half wow what a great start for them they've been keeping new georgia quarterback carson beck at bay so far one more half of that and you'll be etched in college football lore okay you gave up a touchdown in the first drive of the second half that's fine you're still winning put together a drive of your own oh you went three and out 
Where have I seen this movie before? Yep, and Georgia takes the lead. Yeah, this game's over. The Magic first half did not replicate in the second. Georgia's defense does not allow a point in the last 30 minutes of game time. Failure! Well, this should be an easy win for Georgia. Sorry, UAB. You've got your first-year head coach in Trent Dilfer and just lost to Georgia Southern and Louisiana Lafayette in back-to-back -back weeks. And yep, Georgia scores on their first drive. And although they stall out for the rest of the quarter, Georgia ends up cruising to a 49-21 victory. Hey, you can hang your hat on that one singular moment when you were tied 7-7, UAB. Failure! The ever-lengthening quest to beat Georgia returns to Auburn, who does have a new coach this year, but it's gonna take more than Hugh Freeze to be able to topple Georgia. I mean, Auburn just lost pretty embarrassingly to Texas A&M the week prior. Although, this is at Jordan Hare. We all know the supreme whackness that can occur here. Auburn's won the last four games they've played at home against the number one team in the country. Hey, who says this can't be the fifth, huh? And Auburn takes a 10-0 lead. Of course, Georgia responds right after that, and we're tied up at halftime, and Georgia gets the ball to start the second half. Well, this is how it always goes, huh? And he lost the ball. It's out. Yes. Does Auburn have it? Uh, Auburn, you're not falling apart after halftime? Touchdown, Auburn! And you force a stop on your next drive? And you're almost in field goal range? And Thorne goes down for a sack. I'm making the call because the announcers were terrible in this game. Well, great. Punt. And Auburn's defense immediately allows a 10-play, 98-yard excursion down the field by Beck and his receivers. Touchdown run, and we're tied again. Not ideal, but Auburn, you've still got a chance. Oh, wait, you got absolutely owned at the line of scrimmage on third and one. Three and out. Now it's time for Georgia's offense to spam Brock Bowers. Georgia kicks a field goal? Well, Auburn still has a chance to win this. Go get a touchdown and take the lead. First down. All right, first down the fair weather. Why these announcers aren't retired yet is beyond me. First down again. And they throw it short of the sticks on third. They do tie it up on a kick, though, but you already know how this ends. With more Brock Bowers, of course. Brock Bowers. Bowers heading to the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. Touchdown? You thought I was lying about how poorly this game was announced. Get the failure out of here. Georgia must have been pissed about their meek showings the last couple of weeks because they go back home to face Kentucky under the lights and absolutely obliterate them. Everyone, as if you needed more proof, this is what Georgia can do to you at any time. That's why so many of the games we've seen so far during this streak have been so frustrating. Because one, we know what Georgia's potential is, but they keep playing with their food. And two, no team has been able to pull off the upset when they get those chances. Sometimes Georgia's not on top of their game. This was not one of those days. Failure. And this one's not going to be anywhere close. We know that for uh, Georgia. What are you doing? Zips it. His pass is complete. Humphreys into the open field. Inside the five. Touchdown, Vanderbilt. You let Vandy score? Not even that, but you let them score in their first drive? Be ashamed of yourselves, but this shouldn't last too long. He said he lost the football. He knocked it loose and Vanderbilt recovers. Vandy? You're not going to be the ones to finally unseat Georgia, are you? Unfortunately, no. As amazing as that alternate universe might have been, Vandy missed the ensuing field goal and then Georgia scored 27 unanswered points. Failure! Sorry, Florida, but the only thing interesting about this game is we have another safety dance! But yeah, Florida is mid as hell. Put a real team on my screen, please. Come on now, I said a real team. The boss, Missouri actually took that next step this year. They're ranked in everything. Oh, really? Well, this should be fun. Apart from getting out offensed by LSU, Mizzou has won every other game they've played this year, and they come into this matchup with Georgia with something to prove. They've been brushed aside by the SEC as irrelevant for far too long. It's time to get that signature win and have everyone wake up. Beck and Georgia drive down the field to start the game, but Mizzou sacks them to force a field goal, and then Mizzou lets Cook cook. They cook. End zone. Caught! Touchdown! Georgia responds to that with a seven-minute marathon leading to their own touchdown. The rest of the half is punt, save for a game-time kick from the... Kicker, kicker, he's back, baby! 
Now coming out of halftime, Mizzou sustains a drive and gets another field goal to take the lead. But then Georgia scores on back-to-back -back touchdown drives, and all of a sudden, they're up by two scores. There's still time, but Mizzou needs to score here to keep it close. Trader, Trader, Trader! And they do. Now they just need to get a stop on defense. And they do as well, holding the dogs to a field goal. Nine minutes left in the game and a touchdown gives the lead back to the Mizzou Tigers. Come on, Tigers. It's time to let Cook cook again. Show us what you're made of. Cook rolls right. Oh, he threw it away and it's picked off. That's oh, God damn it. No. How many times will a team be this close to beating Georgia just to literally throw the game away? Every time! Is anyone gonna have the aptitude to finish the job when they get these chances? Come on, at some point the other two has to drop, right? He can't keep getting away with it! He can't keep getting away with it! Failure! As if this one was any surprise, Ole Miss, the kings of never taking that next step, gets absolutely obliterated by Georgia. <laughs> Fatality. And then it's Tennessee's turn to get destroyed by Georgia too. Okay, hold on. Can someone explain to me why Tennessee was still ranked after this game, by the way? 7-4 and four with their best win against UTSA? <laughs> Failure! Well, we already know that Georgia will be in the SEC Championship, and they're rolling now, going into Bobby Dodd Stadium, where they haven't lost since the 90s. Yeah, if this game ain't a lock, I don't know what is. The ball comes out, Cannon Johnson has it for Georgia Tech! Oh, hello, Georgia Tech! They fake the reverse, Haynes King the touchdown! Georgia does score touchdowns on their next three drives, though, although Tech keeps it close all the way throughout the first half and had a chance to tie it to end the half, but just couldn't. Oh, and then they missed the field goal, too. No points for you. Yeah, Georgia's about to run away with this again out of halftime, huh? Yep, 31 to 13. Yeah, this game's all but over. Sure, Georgia Tech just kicked a field goal, but it's garbage time now. Georgia's offense is rolling at this point, and roll they do right into the end zone. And it is intercepted. Well then. He's carrying another touchdown. Against all odds, Tech has made this a one-score game. Just one more stop, Tech, and you can tie this up. Do the impossible. Down. Well, I guess that's why they call it the impossible. Georgia Tech loses to Georgia once again. Despite another scare for the Bulldogs, they're now on their 29th Failure. straight win. Holy shit, I've gone through 29 games so far? Georgia is once again cruising into the SEC Championship. And in the process, they'll meet an old friend. Alabama had a terrible start to their year by their standards. They lost at home pretty convincingly to a finally back Texas and were so unimpressed by Jalen Milrow that they started both Tyler Buckner and Ty Simpson in a USF game who were both predictably trash. Milrow was handed back the reins and Ollie and Alabama's defense did was go undefeated in the SEC past that point, including this nonsense. Fire it. Near corner. It's caught! Touchdown, Alabama! They would have still been in the SEC Championship regardless of that Auburn game because of divisions. But with that ridiculous win, Alabama is still alive in the arena of relevance. And how do you prove you're really still here? Well, by being the one to complete the nigh incompletable quest to beat Georgia. That's how. Time to avenge the national championship game in the 2021 season. Time for Alabama to prove their time was never over, removing Georgia from the playoffs entirely in the process. Time to see if they can. Alabama quickly goes three and out, and then Georgia quickly scores to open the game. Alabama then gets a field goal, and Georgia goes three and out. Then Alabama scores a touchdown, 10 unanswered points, and Georgia misses a field goal. Now 17 unanswered points off the backs of a terrible call favoring Alabama too. Yup, what else is new? Yeah, but we've seen Georgia come back from this before. I'm not convinced. Now's about the time coming out of halftime that the offense wakes up. And Arian Smith has got it at the 20 yard line. That's how you get it going. But Alabama once again stops their drive short. Although Georgia does kick a field goal, and Alabama's offense once again can't score after a sack in Georgia territory. Yeah, I see where this is going. Go with the hand around and the ball is out. I think Georgia, no. Alabama's got it. 
is it just me or has Georgia lost their last dash of pixie dust? Alabama's offense is once again stopped short by Georgia's defense though, but it is back now to a double digit lead and Georgia is in dire straits. Down by 10 in the fourth and they once again have to punt it away. Alabama, it's your chance to run away with it here and now. The pocket's collapsing and down but it if goes. this video has shown you anything, it's never gonna be that easy. Back throws. At the one. And that was a quick drive. Once again, Georgia is clawing themselves out of the pits of the lost column. Alabama, you haven't gotten the first down since the third quarter, and you're only up by three now. Your offense, much like Georgia's, has struggled at times all year, but has found success at the most critical of moments. You want to be the SEC champs again? You want to take back Georgia's reign of terror that they so painfully stole from you? Well, then the tide needs to roll right now. In trouble, a shovel pass to Bond again, and a first down. Gonna lob this one over to Bond again, Isaiah Bond. Oh man, are they really gonna do it? Less than six minutes to go and up by two scores, but you've watched this whole video so far. You know Georgia's never been out of it before. You don't win 29 games in a row by accident. You do it by knowing how to win. Fires in the middle, got it! Complete Brock Bowers! Touchdown, but it's all still in Alabama's hands. Alabama, if you can conquer Georgia's defense on one final drive, you can run out the clock on this streak and this quest here and now. He's gonna run it and he's gonna come up big. Jalen Milrow, and he wisely hits the deck. That's one. And Milrow will keep it again. It's his game right now. That's, it. That's two. They're perfect against Georgia in SEC championship games. And that's the quest. Success. The quest to beat the Georgia Bulldogs has ended not with a bang, but with Alabama simply outlasting them, winning the SEC championship and resetting the entire college football paradigm back to square one in the process. In addition, they're controversially back in the college football playoff as well, jumping an undefeated Florida State because Florida State's QB is injured, and Alabama now has the best win in the country. Both of which are true, but which doesn't make it any less stupid. But you know what could have fixed this outcome? Anyone in this video beating Georgia before this. But no. Of course Alabama was going to be the one to break Georgia's streak. Of course it was. Any one of these 28 other teams could have actually showed us a future any different than the past we've endured the past 6 years. Hell, the past 15 years. Yet here we are. We really can't have anything new in college football, can we? Isn't there any parody in this godforsaken game? Hi. Thanks for watching. This video attempted to do one thing. Of course, this Georgia team was generationally good, but you don't need me or this video to tell you that. No, this video was made to acknowledge the fragility of it all. We must never forget how hard it is to win a football game on both the side of the dynasty and the underdog. There were so many ways this video and this streak could have ended so much earlier than it did. Everyone featured today had their chances to win at one point or another, but no new contestants have the tenacity yet to complete their win except the one with the guy who's always had it. Because at the end of the day, it's the ability to complete the win that separates the dynasties from the forgotten.